Cisco Firepower Threat Defense 630, Industrial ISA 3000. We'll talk about OT protocols and command inspection. Um, all right, so first off, we're going to go to Policies, Access Control, Intrusion. And then from there, we're going to go to Intrusion Rules. It's on your top right. Um, when you're here, we're going to create a rule. And we're going to create a couple of rules. And this is actually going to leverage the, the Modbus preprocessor and be able to look for certain Modbus functions. Um, this is... Um, in order for you to leverage this, you have to turn on the Modbus preprocessor, and we did that in the previous video. So we're going to create a rule. We'll call it uh, Modbus Recoils, and we'll say uh, Denial of Service for the classification. And for uh, action, we'll keep it at alert. Um, remember, we don't want to be dropping things in a operational environment. Protocol will be TCP, uh, we'll keep the direction uh, directional, and uh, source destination and source port. Um, so source IP, source uh, or destination IP and source port will be any, but destination port will be 502, right? That's the Modbus uh, port number that's being leveraged. Okay, from here what we'll do is we're going to go down to pick a detection option and it's going to be a Modbus option and there's going to be two we're going to leverage. We're going to leverage Modbus unit and that's going to allow us to select uh, the unit number. In this case, uh, a Modbus slave will have a, a unit number. In our case, it'll be one. Uh, and it's often referred to as uh, the station ID. So I kept that there uh, for folks that may not be familiar with the operational environment. So once we have this uh, configured, we will then add uh, a Modbus function. And basically what we'll want to do is look for the function read coils. So we'll go ahead and select that now. And you can see it down, there's three. There's Modbus data, Modbus function, and Modbus unit. So function is what we're looking for now. And the actual function is read underscore coil. Now, this is going to allow us to determine flows that consist of that command for the slave unit. Um, this certainly empowers uh whether your OT or IT doesn't really matter, but allows either team to be able to build detection mechanisms or even prevention capabilities, leveraging firepower threat defense and, and be fairly granular. So we're gonna read coils in this one. What we're gonna do is save this as new and you're gonna see that it's gonna give it a signature ID. Um, and then we're gonna just modify that one from here to create two more. So you can see the the rule ID a real rule number is one colon you know one zero 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 six colon one right I might have missed a zero here and there but um, but you get the idea when we now modify this one and save it as new um, it'll create uh, it'll increment that six to a seven and then that seven to an eight right. So just uh, for your sake, it, it's, it's, it's not, we're not modifying the existing rule that we just created. We're, we're using it as a template to create a, a net new uh, rule. So write underscore single underscore coil, and we'll save this again as new, and you should see that number in increment. So you can see six colon one. Once uh, it refreshes here, you can see now it's seven colon one. So the right single coils is, the rule number is that seven colon one. Now when we modify this to write multiple coils, um, it, it'll actually go to eight colon one. And again, you can, uh, you know, um, read uh, the manufacturer's guides. Uh, you could leverage uh, any protocol standards 
to truly understand what might be some of the capabilities within some of these protocols and how to build some of these signatures. And we save that and you'll see it increment to eight colon one. Okay, so we've got these three rules. Let's just go back to intrusion rules itself. We should see those three uh, rules as local rules themselves. Um, and you can see them here, right? Six, seven, and eight. Okay, perfect. Now what we'll do is we'll go to policies and we gotta create an intrusion policy, right? And enable these, um, these signatures. Now, I just wanna make you aware, remember earlier we, we enabled the Modbus um, preprocessor in the previous video, right? So Modbus IPS, and we'll create and edit that. And again, you can give it whatever meaningful name that you want. All right, and then we'll go to rules. And we'll search for our rules. Now you could, um, you know, type in in a filter. You can type in malware. You can type in Modbus. Um, uh, you can do it based on uh, category colon local. And I did that by just clicking on um, that category local. But it's really easy to find uh, signatures here. You can come in and hit. Uh, in our case, generate events. We're not going to drop and generate events. Obviously, uh, we don't want to impact the operational environment. But we want to know, right, when a uh, read coil event happens or write uh, single coil or multiple coils. Okay, so now we've got this intrusion policy, but remember, all of this up to this point means nothing. And why it means nothing is, is that it's not applied to a policy. So in this case, uh, I know in the previous um, video we did uh, SCADA detection policy, really focused on the application side of, uh, of, of operational technology protocols. In this case, um, we're gonna actually uh, focus not on application detection, but more the intrusion side of it. Uh, and so we'll create this policy, uh, both it'll be, uh, you can see our default actions, intrusion prevention. Um, you gotta be careful when you're doing that though, that you don't have drop one in line is in play. Um, you wanna truly understand the environment. Here we wanna override, it's already applied to a policy and basically what we're saying, we're assigning this, this sensor or next gen firewall to a uh, new access uh, control policy. So once we create that, we can come in here, we can add a rule and it'll be inside to outside and outside to inside uh, from a uh, zone perspective. I, I mean, it could be if the, in our case, the master is on the outside and the slave, the, the unit that we're talking to is on the inside, you could essentially just say from the outside to the inside. Um, but uh, here, we're, it, again, this is just an example, right? And then we'll go to inspection. And inspection is where we're gonna tie that IPS policy. Remember, we can create all kinds of rules we want. We can create an IPS policy all we want, every day, all day. Uh, but it does nothing until we apply it to an access control policy. Uh, so here we've added that Modbus IPS. Remember, we just previously created that. And then we'll go into logging. Now, we're going to enable both logging uh, beginning and end of connection. It's an allow policy, so you could just have logging at end of connection. Um, but uh, in this case, we want to make sure that just if anything weird happens that we catch, 
uh, we have a chance of catching some more uh, data points, right? So um, there's your intrusion policy. Click save. And then we'll deploy that policy, right? And it'll take a, you know, a little bit for the policy to get pushed. Once it's pushed, it's active and, and we're ready to go. Perfect. All right, the Jeopardy theme song's in your head, right? Uh, and let's assume we're pretty close to done now. We'll go to events. Uh, it should be empty at this point because we haven't been running any tests. So we've got the screen ready to go. And it's a little bit slower here because I'm doing this from RDP and I'm actually using a satellite internet connection. So I've got uh, tremendous latency uh, to deal with here as well. Okay, so this is the uh, Modbus uh, master application. So what we want to do is connect and hit recoils and then disconnect, right? And then we'll connect again. We'll write a single uh, coil and then we'll disconnect. Then we'll connect again and then we'll write multiple coils and then we'll disconnect. So that should give us three triggers, right? If everything's working as expected, we should see three events within IPS. And the refresh, and there it is, right? You can see that actually all three were hit, six, seven, and eight, right? Uh, if, if you go in order. Um, but top down, it's write single coils, write multiple coils, and then read coils. If we go to table uh, of events, table view of events, remember there's a difference, right? You can now start seeing the IP addresses involved in a little bit more detail, and you can add additional columns. Um, and from here, you could take action if you wanted to as well, right? You can right click, um, you can suppress, create thresholds, blacklist, whitelist, etc. So pretty cool, right? Within a few minutes, um, we've got uh, Modbus visibility. We can, 